also for coming to uh, our session to tell you a bit about my work. Um, my name is Maureen Dunn. I'm the Chief Scientist and CEO of UQ Life. It's a Palo Alto educational technology software company. And uh, how, just a quick question here. How many of you have seen this image before? Do a show of hands. Uh, okay, so, so for, for those of you who have not, um, if you could just stare in the center, and how many of you see a, a duck? Yeah, okay. You, you have, how about a, a rabbit? Okay, well, um, this is a, a visual illusion, and if you just keep staring in the center, you know, at some point you'll, you'll, you'll see a, a pattern will emerge, and you'll see either you know, a duck or a rabbit, eventually both. And, um, quite recently, there's, there's been a number of researchers looking at this as a potential tool for uh, assessing creativity. And I just bring it up because it's, um, uh, I think there's a lot of interesting research going on in, in looking at alternative methods of assessment. And the one that I'm particularly interested in is, uh, is games. So um, there's four main topics I'd like to talk about today. So the first one is just uh, what are game-based assessments? Um, what are the advantages? Um, I'm also going to give you a preview into UQ Life's um, uh, 3D story world um, that we've built. It, it's, a, it's the first uh, 3D story world that actually works as um, a research-based assessment tool for um, development of children aged 3 to 9. And I'm going to talk a little bit about just the challenges of developing game-based assessments, um, including some of the lessons that we learned through the development process. And then uh, just briefly, just some applications uh, beyond education for game-based assessments, in particular therapy and job training. Um, so what are game-based assessments? I like to define it, define it as uh, uh, activities in a game that are based on science, are measurable, that part is, is extremely important, which I'll go into a little bit more detail later in terms of, of having scientific uh, validity. And also provide insight into individual cognitive, emotional, and other traits. Um, just a little bit of background in terms of how I got interested in, in this uh, topic. I was uh, doing my doctoral research um, at Oxford University. I was working on um, visual and verbal thinking and just was became you know very fascinated. It was it was the work was with uh, typically developing kids in different age groups and also children on the autism spectrum. And just it became really fascinated with um, some of the discrepancies I was finding um, in a subset of children where the some of the standardized measurements um, such as the Ravens matrices. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Um, were, were there was a discrepancy between how well some children were doing on some of the standardized tests. And then um, when I had uh, basically tested a similar visual spatial uh, abilities, but using games in a, in a different context, in a, a fun, interactive context, there was kids that performed much better. And then there was a second component to the research where we were looking at metacognitive variables too, how, how well kids could explain to how they solved particular problems. And there was, it was interesting to me to find some kids that actually knew a lot more, could comprehend a lot more than they could um, explain. And so it was, uh, it, it, that was sort of the starting point where I thought, okay, maybe there, it, it could be very interesting to see if we could actually um, be able to capture more of the strengths and weaknesses in kids if we could find a way to present assessments in a way that's fun and interactive um, for them and, and so therefore they'd be more motivated to do it. Um, so this is just a very brief example of an upcoming game we have, um, and it's, uh, it's, it's based on a psychological test called the Embedded Figures Test, which is uh, basically a, a, a test that um, looks at uh, attention to details and you know, the ability to abstract out uh, forms and, and objects within ambiguous and, and complex patterns and backgrounds. And we um, so took this, this test, which has a lot of, of, of research behind it, and then uh, adapted it into a really fun, engaging hidden objects game. And so at the core of, of game-based assessments is really this ability to uh, adapt and translate research, which there are rigorous scientific findings, into a creative uh, design that's entertaining and engaging, and doing so in a way that 
that actually uh, does not lose the, the scientific um, basis and, and findings so that it's still a measurable assessment. Um, so here's just a, a snapshot from our 3D um, story world. Um, it's, it's a modern day spin on the classic fairy tale Little Red Riding Hood, but it also works as a developmental assessment engine and um, analyzes a, a number of, of skill sets, including social, cognitive, and motor skills that are important for the, the three to nine year olds, and it's specifically meant to be a school readiness uh, assessment. Um, so there's one module that's just dealing with core skills that are important for the really for the first level, the really young kids, and the, especially the three to six year olds, which is just you know basic understanding of counting uh, shapes and colors. And so this is a 3D environment. It's a, a it's a game where, where kids are asked to. Um, collect mushrooms, and in the process, there's it's, there's very specific probes of you know collect a certain number of mushrooms. Uh, certain they have to differentiate shapes and colors, and what we're doing really is is tracking their progress, tracking their their understanding, and uh, the result is a, a a assessment skills profile report that can be used then for to teachers and parents to understand you know where where the child is. Uh, in terms of these skill sets. Now, um, this is just one module, and uh, I, I really strongly believe that there's other skills that are just as important um, in, in doing well in school and uh, achieving later in life, especially like social skills, getting along with people, perspective taking, empathy. And so we uh, built a, a module just focused on social skills and empathy and perspective taking. And so. Um, I just bring this up because uh, one, one area of research that has, has um, uh, been very interesting and has a lot of robust findings over the past several decades is um, in looking at how children develop a, a theory of mind and an understanding of uh, how other people think and believe and be able to infer the mental states and processes. And it's been shown that this is an ability that actually is quite important to both doing well early in school and also later in life. Um, and so there's very there's different variations of the theory of mind. Uh, it's, it's actually based on a, a, what they call a false belief task. Um, this is, is one version. And, and in this experiment, a child's shown a crayon box um, and asked, asked, uh, uh, the experimenter asks the child, OK, what do you think is inside this box? And then the child, of course, is crayons. Um, and then the experimenter opens the box and shows the child, no, there's actually candles inside the, the box. Um, and then the, a third character is introduced, in this case, Snoopy, and is, is told, OK, well, Snoopy um, did not see what is inside the box. He wasn't in the room, but he's coming back now. When he comes back, when, what do you think he will think is inside the box? And three-year-olds reliably will say, uh, candles, because they don't seem to make a dif you know, differentiation between what they believe and what they know about the world and what others know or believe about the world. And four-year-olds will consistently say the correct answer, um, which is crayons. And so we adapted um, that task into our gaming environment. And so, so what I find interesting is that you know, so we, we, we developed a full 3D gaming environment, introduced new characters, and then had to integrate, um, make sure that there was a real synergy between the science and the, the art and the design so that this is, it, it's, 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 it becomes part of the story. The child is discovering these new friends and these new environments, but at the same time, we very closely model uh, a research task that can be measured. And so in this case, um, we, the, the main character, Red, she meets this new friend, uh, Benjamin the Bee, in the forest. And she shows him that she's got a, a, a basket of, of apples. Um, and then he says, uh, has a little uh, sticker on, on the, the, when it's closed, saying apples as well. And, uh, and then Benjamin takes off and, and flies away. And then when, uh, while he's away, the, the main character then um, decides to pick flowers for her grandmother. And so she take, takes out the apples and instead puts in flowers in her basket. And then Benjamin the Bee comes back, and the main narrator of, um, of the game then asks the child to infer, OK, what will this character, Benjamin the Bee, now believe is inside the basket? 
And so we've um, been finding, you know, uh, similar, you know, same findings, same results as previous research has shown. Um, but in this case, it's, 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 it's useful data for parents and teachers to understand, you know, where their kids are at in terms of skill sets. And now we also did a, a, a much, a more simple version of the task because there's basic understanding of, of goals and intentions of others um, that are precursors to development of theory of mind. And so um, there's a, a, a part of the interactive story where the child, um, well, the main character actually encounters the wolf and then is asked a number of questions of, based on social cues and context, what do you think the wolf wants? Does he want your basket? Does he want uh, friendship? Is it a locket? And the child has to make a decision. And then if the incorrect decision is, is made, then there's a series of uh, hints and feedback that are also provided to help the child uh, get better and improve with perspective taking. Um, and so then the result again is a report. This is based on uh, various different types of analysis, cluster analysis, also some proprietary data, analytical methods that we've developed um, uh, to be able to show uh, parents and teachers, okay, here's, here's around a range of skill sets. This is where this child is at, and also to give details about why particular skill sets are in fact important uh, to development. Um, so there's a lot of, of advantages uh, to behavior assessments, and, and the, the big one I think is just the, the motivation for, for children to want to do them through play. Um, I'll talk just a little bit about some of the challenges, and you know, one of them is just this multidisciplinary talent that's required. You need, um, you know, researchers, scientists, um, game developers, very creative people, all working together, and that presents some some real challenges because there's always then going to be this this very necessary tension, but but also synergy between between the scientific goals and the creative, entertaining goals. And uh, just to give you a, a quick example, when we were uh, first developing the prototype for the game that um, uh, this, this Rise of Adventure 3D Story World, um, I had mapped out um, that theory of mind task. I, you know, and it very clearly in the design document, but we had this other game designer who, uh, you know, thought, thought that there was a, a better way to, he, he made some changes and modifications thinking he was, was the right thing to do because given his experience in the gaming industry, there was um, some modifications he thought would make it more fun or based on his experience just seemed to be the, would make sense to him. And then it got us in this tension, okay, wait a minute, now it's not, it's no longer a scientific task we can measure. <laughs> and this is, this is an assessment. And so it, it gets, but we have people that are from very different backgrounds and they all want to contribute. And for it to work, the standards have to be very high on both the science and the creative and the design and also to be uh, working together, you know, a, a, a real synergy between that art and science, and so it's it's exciting and it's interesting, but it, you know, it, it's it's challenging. It's difficult to manage that process, and just the development time as well. Like just working with game developers, when they're used to a very different process, a very fast process, ship really quickly, and something like this requires a, a lengthy research. We need to do pretests, post-tests. We need to make sure it actually is measuring what we. Are intending it measures, and that's a, a longer process. Um, and, and, and finally, it also just demands a, a really different way of thinking about user metrics. I mean, it's quite common, uh, especially in the gaming industry, to be tracking um, in terms of like uh, retention, how long kids are playing, how many times they come back, and that's all important. But for, for something like this, it requires just a different way of, of thinking about data and thinking about um, analysis than some people, you know, for, that are coming from, from more social games or, or straight entertaining games are particularly used to. Um, and then there's also not just, as I mentioned, like the, the, the standards for the science have to be very high, but then there's also the creative and the artistic um, side of this because to capture a child's attention and for it to be entertaining and to not feel like an assessment or a test, because kids don't like to take tests, but I think they manage an approach like this. There's also just, um, you know, a lot of thought that and testing that needs to go into, you know, testing characters. What, what, so this is just uh, some of the, this was the first um, uh, just basic draft. We went from Benjamin to B and we ended up, you know, combining two or three characters here. To, 
and, and testing them with lots of kids uh, to get to a, a character that the kids loved. Um, okay, so in terms of um, uh, additional applications, um, I think that this is an approach that could work not just for education, but also for um, therapy and job training uh, in particular. And, and I, you, I showed you the, the social-emotional module. Um, I, I spent a, a lot of, of, of time in my career working with kids with autism, and so I was particularly interested in adapting the social-emotional uh, module for more of a therapeutic approach. Um, and I think that this is something that could be, um, uh, could, with more research, become more even a, a, a clinical grade type of assessment and something that is quite valuable to, to therapists and psychologists as they're trying to help customize therapeutic programs. Um, and also just with job training, um, I could see how this kind of approach could be helpful um, you know, young uh, teenagers or, or in college, you know, trying to figure out where they, they might fit in in terms of a career, um, playing games to, to that, that could help them understand more about their strengths and their weaknesses and their aptitude and where they might fit in, which would be, I think, you know, preferable to the sort of more standardized assessments that are out there. Um, so I'll just end with, with saying that I think that, you know, again, the, the, what's really critical is just keeping the kids engaged and motivated for them to want to play these, you know, assessments. And so the standards, again, are, are very high in terms of even the entertainment part and keeping their attention. And so this is just, uh, I'm going to end with just a short video clip of uh, kids playing um, in our early beta, uh, our games, and uh, just to see the reaction. This is the, the sort of reaction that we always are like the standard that we look for to, to achieve to see if, if we're doing well. Um. Thank you.